Hello, incredible listeners. It's Sharice here, your host at Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast. I'm thrilled to have you with us for another inspiring episode. Today, I have an exciting opportunity to share with businesses, brands, and fellow podcast enthusiasts out there. Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast has become a hub for positive conversation, personal growth, and inspiring stories. Our listeners are engaged, passionate, and eager to discover new products and services that align with their values. And now, we're opening up the doors for advertising partnerships. If you have a product, service, or message that resonates with our audience, we love to feature it on our podcast. Why advertise with us? Well, you'll get exposure to a diverse and dedicated audience. Your brand showcased in a positive and uplifting environment and the chance to be part of a community that believes in making a difference. We offer various advertising packages to suit your needs, from sponsorship segments to product placements and everything in between. It's a fantastic way to connect with our, our listeners and let them know about what you have to offer. If you're interested in advertising on Sharif Johnson Moore's podcast and being a part of a space that values authenticity and positivity, reach out to us at snjm at sharicenjohnsonmore.com and let's discuss how we can collaborate and create something amazing together. I'm genuinely excited about the possibilities of featuring your brand on our podcast. Together, let's inspire, uplift, and make every episode an incredible experience for our listeners. Thank you for considering Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast for your advertising needs. I can't wait to hear from you and share your story with our wonderful community. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Daily Devotional. Today, we are in the book of First Chronicles, chapter 10, 1 through 14, and it recounts the tragic events following the death of Saul, the king of Israel, and his sons in the battle against the Philistines. The passage describes the defeat of Israel with Saul taking his own life to avoid capture by the enemy. The Philistines, upon discovering the bodies of Saul and his sons, spread the news throughout their cities and hung their armor in the temple of their idols. This somber chapter reflects the consequences of disobedience and the challenges faced by the Israelites in the early days of their monarchy. So, come on and let's get into this word for the day and how we can apply it to our daily living. Come on now, let's get busy with Daily Devotional. First Chronicles chapter 10, 1 through 14, and it reads, Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilbeo. And the Philistines followed hard after Saul and after his sons, and the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab, and Malshishua, the sons of Saul. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was wounded of the archers. Then Saul, then said Saul to his armor bearer, 
draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith. Least these uncircumcised come and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was so afraid. So Saul took a sword and fell upon it. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise on the sword and died. So Saul died, and his three sons and all his house died together. And when all the men of Israel that were in the valley saw that they fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, then they forsook their cities and fled. And the Philistines came and dwelt in them. And it came to pass on the morning, on the morrow, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his sons fallen in Mount Gilbeo. And when they had stripped him, they took his head and his armor and sent it into the land of the Philistines round about to carry tidings unto their idols and to the people. And they put his armor in the house of their gods and fastened his head in the temple of Dagon. And when all Jabesh Gilead heard all that the Philistines had done to Saul, they arose, all the valiant men, and took away the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons and brought them to Jabesh and buried their bones under the oak in Jabesh and fasted seven days. So Saul died for his transgressions, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord, therefore he slew him, and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. I have just read 1 Chronicles chapter 10, 1 through 14. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning to say thank you, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to have a breath in our bodies and activity of our limbs, and we are in our right minds, Lord. We we thank you. We thank you with all our hearts and souls, Lord. We thank you for your love and grace and mercy that you show upon us. Lord, we say thank you for your words of honor, uh, of truth. And, Lord, we say thank you, Lord. We thank you. May you add a blessing to the reading of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, We do pray, amen, amen, and amen. All right now, let's get into this word for the day. 1 Chronicles chapter 10, 1 through 14. And it speaks about the death of Saul and his sons. Death of Saul and his sons. We see that Saul has been placed in a high-ranking position. He's the king of Israel. And because of his disobedience to what God had asked him to do, this is his outcome. Saul decided in his mind that he wanted, because he was king, he let his position go to his head. And that's how he lost his head. Because he was doing, he started doing things that were not of God. You know, where you see how him and David fell out. (laughs) Saul started getting jealous of David. 
And David was just there. David was there. You know, you know, well, David was there for him. But Saul got jealous of him. And we see that Saul not only got jealous of David in his reign, we see, we even see that Saul tried to kill David. And David had to flee. And, you know, just Saul just fell to pieces. Saul just started doing hateful stuff and mean stuff to people and he just thought he could do, he could conquer, he could he could just go in and take over everybody's everybody else's uh territory and things of that nature in his reign. And some things, and he started doing things God didn't ask him to do. You know, um and because of his disobedience to what God asked him to do, this is what happens to him. He not only causes the death of himself, he causes the death of his sons. Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malshashua. Malshashua. His three sons. And he goes up against the Philistines and he fights against them and he, you know, but he doesn't have the, you gotta uh, understand, you gotta understand, obedience is better than sacrifice. Because really, in actuality, you know, when you get a big head and you get this position and you get, you get beside yourself, and start, and my grandma would say, you start smelling yourself. You know, uh, it brings on a bunch, it brings on a, a, a heap of trouble of doing things out of God's will and His way for your life. And during the course of, you know, and it just so be, you know, His whole line is erased, His whole lineage is erased. His sons are dead, He is dead. The Philistines turn around and take his body and, and, and take his dead body and tote it around and show it to everybody. And, you know, um, just, you just imagine that. Where you think that you are above what God has asked you to do and you start doing stuff out of the will of God and then your life just falls to pieces. Imagine that. Well, you start doing all the other things. I, 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 I give you this example. Give you this example with my life. I knew the calling on my life, but I ran from my calling. But when I ran from my calling, I stepped out of the will of God, and God allowed some things in my life to happen, you know, in my life to happen to me that I could avoid it. I could have avoided the drug addiction. I could have avoided dropping out of school. I could have avoided. I could have avoided uh, uh, having children out of wedlock. I could have avoided a lot of things if I had just listened to the guidance of my grandma. And when we do destructive things, it has consequences, and repercussions. When we do things out of the will of God, it has consequences and repercussions. So because Saul steps out of the will of God and he goes after David, he fights people he don't have no business fighting. You know, you get in arguments that you that really don't have nothing to do with you or, or, or disagreements with people that have nothing to, you know, it's almost like a game, a game. Okay, you get in, the person gets in a game and the game wants to fight this other game. And this the the gang that the gang A, you the person gets in gang A, right? And then the gang A wants to go fight gang B, right? And then because 
this is something that that was just started to be doing something. You and gang be like, man, we don't have no beef with you. We don't got no beef with you. We don't. We, we, we not. We not. Uh, we we not bothering you. But gang A persists, persists with the taunting. Uh, they may be shooting each other. They may start shooting the other gang members and things like that. And, and going after people that ain't done nothing to you. Okay? That, I, I, you know, that have nothing to do with your life. That have nothing to do with your, your journey. And you just start this, uh, uh, you know, this, this thing with people that have nothing to do with your journey. And it causes... Destruction. Well, you you may they they might have started shooting each other. You start this one game. They shoot they, they shooting the members and they want to take over their rivals and they want to take over their over over their territory and all that other stuff. And then before you know it, the the people that started is the ones that's dead. Everybody in the crew is dead because they went out here and started messing with people that had nothing to do with them. And it causes the life of, from their consequences of these actions, Gang B takes out Gang A altogether. I know that's kind of a different scenario of you to think of. But when you step out of the will of God for your life, you are in trouble. Trouble with capital T. Because you start doing, you just start doing stuff like, Having all these wives and, and fornicating and, and and taking over people's land and, and going in and bullying people and things like that. And, and then uh, and, and then you can't bully everybody. You can't bully everybody. You can't go in and take over people's territory. You can't go in and don't think that people are not going to have, are not going to get some get back, as they call it. And... We see slowly the demise of Saul in his reign. Watch out when it comes to your thoughts and your deeds. Or how you treat other people. That's another thing my grandma would tell me. Watch out how you treat people. Because you can't abuse everybody. You can't you can't have authority over everybody. You can't have authority. You just have authority over what God gave you. What God has bestowed you with. You know, and it, it reminds me of, you know, that scenario I told you about. It reminds me of all the all this uprising we have in today's society when it comes to People not liking black people, people not liking Jews, people not like, not that, you know, we already had, you know, 19, in the 40s, 30s and 40s, 1930s and 40s, where they turn around and they were, you got Nazis killing Jews. Now, these same people want to rear their ugly hand and come out the woodworks and, and do all this, oh, we white nationalists and we this and we that. And I was like, really? And some people think that's a way of living. Well, I want to ostracize the other people in my community that don't look like me and don't think like me and, and don't have anything like me. And they want to keep them in a box. That's the dynamic of Saul and David's relationship. If you think about that, if you read the story. Oh, well, I'm going to get jealous of you because... Everybody's your name, and everybody's making you a, 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 a king, and everybody's looking up to you. And then you know, and you think about it, you think of, I think of with Black History Month, got to being be Black History Month. I think of it as okay, so I want to. I don't. I don't. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want the blacks to have affirmative action. I don't want the blacks to have. Uh, uh, the DE, DEI concept. You know, they don't want anybody advanced. They don't, and they take it, and then you bullying people so bad 
that people are sitting here dying or you or you or you you have ostracized these people for so long that some people are dying behind the cause that you you'll be over 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 overextending yourself you you you're placing your demands on other people and the demands have gotten overbearing You know, and then we have then then we have the upright. We you know you got what's going on in Congo in the Congo, people over there trying to take over because oh Africa has all these resources. We gonna just take their stuff from them because they don't know no better. As you know, history has a way of repeating itself. Instead of them being slaves brought to America, now they're slaves in their own country. Because of something that they need from these people to have all these amenities that we have in other countries. Cobalt, for instance. And what people don't understand is disobedience has consequences and because of Saul's disobedience with the people disobedience with what God asked him to do God didn't ask him to do all that extra stuff he was doing go here, we gotta fight these people we gotta take over this We got God didn't tell him to do all that and it is ter- it is a it is it is not a good thing to have someone in your corner and mistreat them. To have Saul had David and got jealous and and started getting jealous of David because everybody was calling his name. Because David was the one out here winning the war for him. Winning these battles. Doing what he had to do. You know, God gave him the skill as of a battle man, you know, he can go out and kill whoever, whoever, you know, and don't nothing touch David. And Saul got jealous, mad, envious of David. And it was like, really? David had to run. As if you remember in the palace, after a certain battle and everybody was talking about David this, David that, he threw a javelin at David. And David, he missed him. But David got the point. Time to go. And it's bad in a leadership role when you run off your most loyal person. When you sit and you 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 run off the loyalest person you could ever have in your corner and you treat them, you start treating them bad, and then you be wondering, why why they put my business all in the street? You know, now now in the day society. Well, if you're loyal to somebody and they treat you kind of crappy, everybody want to run to the media and turn around and tell on these people. Okay? We see, we see in that. We, we see, we see in people that are in leadership roles that they getting busted for different kind of conversations or uh, they're getting busted for different kind of conversations that they don't think they're being recorded, but they are and they, put, they being put on blast. You know, where these top officials, where God's giving them position, and God, and you turn around, and you start treating the people, you start treating the people that are, 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 are um, that you are supervising, uh, you know, you, you have your, your, you know, you have your sheep, or whatever, you know, in these, cl- in these high echelon cl- clergy roles, bishops, are bishops, Apostles, uh, uh, evangelists, uh, pastors—you uh, know—they have these these titles, and the people are finding out that these people are terrible at being leaders. Leadership is something that should never be played with. When you guys place you in that position, and we see the demise of you we see the deaths of pastors that 
how can I say it? They've stepped out of the will of God. They stepped out all of what God asked them to do. Now they, oh, I'm big. I'm, I'm, I'm the bishop. I'm this. I'm apostle. I'm a. I, you need to address me. I, I remember I, I had, I had a crazy, uh, a crazy experience with a with a with a leader one time, and I was like, really. Oh, uh, you know, where I was asked, me and a friend of mine were asked to lead a church that they were uh, leading, a, leading a church that they want to start a new church where we lived at. It was like, okay. And then it's a thing of, it's called communication. And uh, we tried to communicate with the, with the pastor and tell them, uh, we were not able to get a place that uh, a place to have the, per- the program at church gathering, and they did not answer the phone. And what had happened was was when we got in that meeting the following week, we got a earful of this is my church. Did nobody tell you to cancel my program? It was my 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 my, and I'm sitting there like. Okay, so that made me look at that person totally different, really, and it gave me a new nuance of what unholy about that. It, it when you get to the point where you think you can say anything to anybody because you're in a leadership role, you are saw you are you are sadly mistaken, sadly. Because people do not have to take your abuse because of your because of your title. Everybody human, you do not have to take anybody's abuse when it comes to their titles. Title is just a title. You still a person. And this is this is what leads to the devil's soul being arrogant. You know, boisterous. I, I'm the man. I'm this. I'm that. Uh, you gonna do as I say? And I was like, okay. You know, and when you get to that point where you you are leaving God out of your equation, God changes your equation. When you leave God out of your equation, God changes your equation. So, uh, like I said, behind Saul's decisions, he ends his life and his son's life so what are you going to change that what are you going to change in your life today that could change the tra- trajectory of your children your grandchildren or your children's children children what things can you change to keep them from having that having having to come into 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 a place of where you're not killing off your next generation or the generation after that or generation after that. What are you doing? What are you going to do different, you know, in your life to keep your generation going instead of you keep doing the stuff that God didn't ask you to do and being disobedient, you know, because disobedient is death. So I just want you to give you that thought for today. Just want to give you that, that thought for, for today. All right, everyone. So, do things different in your life that have different consequences in it for your children. Because your children are paying attention to you. Your children are watching you. We see that in social media all day long. About how children mimic their parents. They, 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 they do everything that their parents are doing. You see it on, in the videos and all that. You know, how the kids be, they paying attention of what you do and how you treat others and how you treat the ones that that don't have anything, that don't have any as much as you. How are you treating the person that doesn't have as much as you? How are you treating that next one? Love thy neighbor as thyself. It doesn't matter how you love them as long as you love them. If they homeless, you get them food, clothing, and shelter. 
if they need advice and you see they, they doing some stuff in their life and you can help them by sitting down and giving them what you went through in your life because of your disobedience, do so. Do so. So, think about that for today. You know. All right, babies. I want to thank you all for listening, for listening, <laughs> listening today for Daily Devotional. We were talking about First Chronicles 10, 1 through 14, the death of Saul and his sons. And, you know, do some things different in your life if you want a different outcome. Okay? I love you all. And please leave me a voice message. Uh, send me an email. However you want to, you know, you can leave a comment in the comment section here. Uh, you can email me or you can, you know, like I said, leave a voice message. I greatly appreciate you listening to our daily devotional for today. And I want you to have a blessed day. All right, now, I will talk to you tomorrow on Daily Devotional. Bye, babies. Hello, incredible listeners. It's Sharice here, your host at Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast. I'm thrilled to have you with us for another inspiring episode. Today, I have an exciting opportunity to share with businesses, brands, and fellow podcast enthusiasts out there. Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast has become a hub for positive conversation, personal growth, and inspiring stories. Our listeners are engaged, passionate, and eager to discover new products and services that align with their values. And now, we're opening up the doors for advertising partnerships. If you have a product, service, or message that resonates with our audience, we love to feature it on our podcast. Why advertise with us? Well... You'll get exposure to a diverse and dedicated audience, your brand showcased in a positive and uplifting environment, and the chance to be part of a community that believes in making a difference. We offer various advertising packages to suit your needs, from sponsorship segments to product placements, and everything in between. It's a fantastic way to connect with our, our listeners and let them know about what you have to offer. If you're interested in advertising on Sharif Johnson Moore's podcast and being a part of a space that values authenticity and positivity, reach out to us at snjm at sharicenjohnsonmore.com and let's discuss how we can collaborate and create something amazing together. I'm genuinely excited about the possibilities of featuring your brand on our podcast. Together, let's inspire, uplift, and make every episode an incredible experience for our listeners. Thank you for considering Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast for your advertising needs. I can't wait to hear from you and share your story with our wonderful community. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. I want to say thank you for listening to the podcast for this morning of Daily Devotional. I pray that you have a very blessed day, and remember that God loves you, he cherishes you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you, okay? And I love you, and I will talk to you again tomorrow for our meetup for Daily Devotional. All right now, go out and conquer the day. With God on your side, all things are possible. Okay. All right. Talk to y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye, babies.